It's late, but we're still pushing out content. Night one, day one of the NFL draft is officially in the books. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Sr. And coming up on today's show, we're going to do a 49ers mock draft following round one. There was so much movement, so much craziness that transpired throughout the night. But first, let's get to the latest on Debo Samuel. Is he staying following the run of wide receivers early in the first round and with that A.J. Brown trade to the Philadelphia Eagles then in turn, Philadelphia giving him a monster contract extension. So this was the trade that sent ripple effects all across the National Football League. Eagles get a number one wide receiver to pair up with Devontae Smith for Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown from the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee gets a first round pick, 18th from Philadelphia, and a third round pick, 101 overall, which you can still get some really good value there. Now, this is where it gets interesting, and this is where Debo Samuel enters the equation, because after that trade was made official, A.J. Brown, in a similar situation as Debo Samuel, second round pick, entering the final year of his rookie deal, looking for a new monster contract extension so that he can get paid. He did so by Philadelphia. A four-year contract extension worth $100 million in guaranteed money, $57 million in guarantees. What that does, it makes A.J. Brown the fourth highest paid wide receiver in the National Football League behind Tyreek Hill, who's making $30 million per year, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, now A.J. Brown. On an average annual value basis, A.J. Brown with that new contract extension making $25 million per year. Debo Samuel now has some advantageous abilities at the negotiation tables if he wants to negotiate a contract with the 49ers or a different team. Because he can certainly make the argument he's a better wide receiver and a more impactful offensive player than A.J. Brown. So while Debo Samuel might be frustrated with the fact that he hasn't been offered a contract by San Francisco yet, be patient, my man, because you're going to get paid and you're going to secure a monster bag around 25 mil per year, like A.J. Brown, maybe even more. And now that the 49ers have waited so long, they're going to have to pony up and they're going to have to give Debo Samuel a lot of cash if they want him to remain in the Bay to grow with Trey Lance. Also, there's this. The run of wide receivers in that first round, as Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Drake London, Jamison Williams, all went off the board in the middle portion of that first round, no team made a trade for Debo. Now, there were some reports about the Jets offering number 10 overall and another pick or two for Debo. Niners turned it down. So that run of wide receivers then led to no Debo trade. And there's also this from Josina Anderson, formerly of ESPN, now doing her own thing. We call her Josie at Chat Sports. She said that Debo loves football, so we wouldn't sit out in 2022, and a return to the Niners would not be awkward because John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan do a great job of kind of ironing some of these difficulties out. So are we looking at a scenario in which Debo, the other day, looked as though he was going to be dealt, no longer going to be dealt. Maybe now he's paid by the Niners. We'll keep you up to date right here on the 49ers Report. That is why you subscribe. You tell me, though. Will Debo return to the Niners in 2022? Get into the comment section, and I want all of you to get your votes in because I really do appreciate your feedback. Type in R for return, L for leave. I want to see where you're at in this Debo situation. Let's pivot now to the 49ers mock draft following round one. Still some really intriguing prospects still left on the board. Niners as of right now, nine picks. Second round. That's their first selection at 61st overall. No first round pick till 2024 because of that Trey Lance trade up. Two third round picks, 93 105. Fourth round pick at 134. Fifth round pick at 172. Three six round picks at 187, 220, 221. Then that final pick at 262. According to our draft expert, Tom Downey, these are the best players available. I think Nicobe Dean can be an impactful linebacker. For the next 10 years, the fact that he's lasting until round two is crazy. I love him. You need to trade up to take him, and the Niners don't have a need at linebacker. Brees Hall, my number one running back in this draft class, also still available. So, too, is a couple of really good defensive backs in Roger McCreary out of Auburn and Andrew Booth out of Clemson. Sky Moore, wide receiver out of Western Michigan, gives me Stephon Diggs vibes with his footwork and his route ability. Jalen Petrie, maybe we're going to get to him here in just a few moments, also available. Number 33rd overall prospect, according to Downey. 
Kenneth Walker still there on the board. So too is Arnold Ebikite out of Penn State. Then a few more intriguing pieces. Kyler Gordon, the cornerback out of Washington, who was kind of overshadowed a little bit by Trent McDuffie, who went in the first round to KC. Chad Muma, George Pickens, Travis Jones also on the board. So we'll see if the Niners go after some of these players. If they are intrigued by these prospects, it would probably require a trade-up. So let's kick off this mock draft. We put it through the Pro Football Network simulator, and guess who is still on the board? A guy who we've covered and talked about a lot here on the 49ers report, Jalen Petrie. Now, I kind of like Jaquan Brisker out of Penn State a little bit more, but he wasn't available when the 49ers pick came along at number 61. Let's take a look at his scouting profile because I really like I really like him. Flies around the field, loves to hit guys, is not afraid to put his hat on the football or ball carriers or pass catchers, moves well in space and around blockers, struggled with missed tackles a little bit. In a unique role at Baylor with some positional flexibility, he has cover skills to challenge pass catchers man-to-man -man, and the downhill instincts to make stops at or behind the line of scrimmage. And if the Niners want to move on in the future from Jimmy Ward, Jalen Petrie could be an ideal replacement. I went with Petrie at 61. Who do you want the Niners to draft when their first pick of the 2022 NFL draft comes along? Maybe they'll trade up, but I did not trade up in this particular sequence. Let me know in the comment section right now. At number 93, we already addressed the defensive secondary and safety, which is a need. We have to address yet another need at center because I think Alex Mack is going to retire and Cam Jur uh, Jurgens out of Nebraska is a really intriguing prospect too. If he's available at number 93, that could be some excellent value for San Francisco. A lot of draft evaluators have him as a top 50 prospect. Our scouting report on him, former tight end, converted to offensive line, so already you know he's got great athletic traits and that was backed up by the great athletic testing numbers. He can display that in the screen game, which you know that Kyle Shanahan really covets and likes, suffers from a lack of power or recovery, which does lead to holding penalties. But in Kyle Shanahan's outside zone scheme, you get him out on some pool blocks and space on some of those screen passes and outside zone runs. He can really play well and be an impactful player out in space. And then if he has some bulky players around him on that offensive line, like an Aaron Banks, like a Jalen Moore, like a Trent Williams, then that kind of covers up for some of the deficiencies in his game. At pick number 105, we're going to address another need. That's edge rusher. And it's a position that the 49ers always seem to really value in the draft as well as in free agency. Josh Paschal, Edge rusher out of Kentucky. He's a strong run defender with defensive line versatility. He can play outside, inside. Really helped his stock with strong athletic testing numbers. Limited sack production. Needs to develop as a pass rusher and add more of an array of pass rushing moves. But the Niners have a great problem at their disposal and at their fingertips, right? You already have Nick Bosa. They exercise his fifth-year option you line up Josh Pascal opposite of Nick Bosa, that could open up some opportunities for him to get after opposing quarterbacks. Now here on the 49ers Report, our coverage throughout the offseason has been killer, and I hope you subscribe to the channel. I also hope you subscribe to our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. We were live on night one of the NFL Draft, and we will be live for day two, rounds two and three, breaking down every single pick, and we'll be releasing those selections before ESPN, as well as NFL. NFL Network. So make sure you subscribe and join us. YouTube.com slash chat sports TV. We'll be live on YouTube as well as Rumble. We move ahead to pick number 134 as we progress throughout our mock draft with another player who I have have mocked to the Niners in previous mock drafts because I like his length. I like his coverage skills. That's Zion McCollum out of Sam Houston State. He's overlooked because he went to Sam Houston State, but he's a ball hawk with great athleticism. The testing numbers certainly evidence that. Five-year starter in college with some special teams value as well. So if he doesn't impact the Niners' defensive scheme right away, maybe he can contribute on special teams. The competition jump from FCS to the NFL is, of course, a little bit of a concern, but down the road, I think he can be a legitimate number two cornerback. At number 172, Danny Gray. 
He's a favorite of mine, wide receiver for SMU. I remember I was watching SMU beat TCU in Fort Worth. This guy popped off. He put up crazy numbers, and I looked at him and I said, Danny Gray can play in the league. And if you get him this late in the NFL draft, that's excellent value. Good vertical threat, solid athleticism, can make plays after the catch. Drops are certainly an issue. Awesome production after the catch. If you take a look at the deep dive analytics, he does lack a little bit of power, a little bit of strength to be a true top option at wide receiver. But in Kyle Shanahan's offense, he doesn't need to be the number one guy. You put him in the slot, he can be an ideal number two, number three, pick up some yards after the catch, and if Kyle Shanahan schemes him open, my goodness, he can take it to the crib and certainly drop some jaws in the process. Going into day two, what do you think the 49ers' biggest need is? I want you to let me know in the comment section and play the role of John Lynch, Adam Peters, as well as Kyle Shanahan. I want you to be a draft evaluator and a 49ers evaluator, and let me know what the 49ers' biggest need is. We've already talked about edge We've talked about offensive line, the defensive secondary, depth at that wide receiver spot. Let me know if you disagree or agree with me. Four more picks to get to to round out our mock draft following day one. And I really like Dylan Parham, offensive guard and center out of Memphis because of that positional versatility. His size at 6'3", 311, extremely quick off the ball, has mobility. Again, Kyle Shanahan looks for these traits. Ty Davis Price, running back out of LSU, not sure he's a three-down guy, but as a physical runner who's a little bit shorter, he can certainly bring some physicality to the position. Josh Joby, defensive back out of Alabama. Why do I like him? Because he went to Alabama, and Nick Saban is one of the best defensive coaches that we've ever seen. I bet on him trying to crack eight NFL roster. Lastly, Connor Hayward, running back and tight end out of Michigan State. If you're getting flashes of Kyle Juszczyk or Josh Hokett, who is the backup fullback on this 49ers roster, Connor Hayward might be able to develop into that over time. He can play both positions, and if you pick him with the final selection of the overall draft at 262, Mr. Irrelevant, he might not make the roster, but if he does, if he's a practice squad guy for a couple of years because we figure that Juice Kyle Juszczyk is going to be on this team for a little while, then why not take a swing? Before I get out of here, appreciate all of you for rocking and rolling with us here on the 49ers Report. Grade this mock draft following night one of the NFL Draft, A, B, C, D, or F, and make sure you subscribe and join our content. We're going to be going live at the back end of round two prior to the Niners selection at 61, and then we'll be pushing out draft evaluation breakdowns of all of the selections that the Niners make. Hit that red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. If you're up late watching this, thank you. If you're up in the morning, you're go-getter, and thank you.